In part one of our lessons on reserving whites and lights, you'll learn to create intentional blooms of various sorts. You'll need a 1 16th sheet of watercolor paper on which you've drawn a grid like this and your usual watercolor setup. And you'll also need your Holbein spray bottle and a natural sponge. I'm going to use a nice dark ultramarine blue so that things will show up a little better on the video, but you can use any color you wish. And I encourage you to try this exercise with a variety of pigments. I'm going to begin by laying a wash in the first square. In this case, I'm trying to use plenty of paint, but you'll notice I'm not maintaining as much of a bead as usual. That's because making a bloom depends on the wash beginning to dry, so I don't want to get this too wet. It's a very humid day here. Most watercolorists say that they make a bloom when the shine is just starting to go off the paper. So I'm going to monitor this wash as it dries, watching for that moment, which might not happen at the same time in the entire square. And then when I think it might be the right moment, I'm going to give it a try by just dragging a brush with some clear water. And if I've judged the moment correctly, what happens is some of the pigment is pushed out before it has a chance to land on the paper and get absorbed. And I get a lighter area. I've got an area here that's starting to dry to the right um, moisture content. Here's another area that looks like it might be the right moisture content. I'll try that again with a thinner line. You have to be patient when you're making blooms. It takes a moment for them to develop. So if you don't see something happening right away, it doesn't mean you did it wrong. It might just mean you have to wait a moment for the bloom to occur. In this square, we made linear strokes with the brush. In this one, we'll make droplets. So again, I'm going to fill the square with a wash, trying not to carry too much of a bead this time because I don't want to have things take too long to dry. It's 98% um, humidity here today. It's a very rainy day. So I'm doing things a little differently than I might normally. And again, I have to monitor the surface. Right now it's quite shiny, and I'm looking for that point where the shine is just starting to go off as the wash dries. And I may have to wait patiently for a little while for that to happen. If I drop water in too soon, it will just blend with everything else and make a paler section of the wash. If I drop it in too late, the color will have already settled onto the page and will not move. So I have to find just the right moment. This corner is looking like it has just reached the right point. So in this one, I'm going to try dropping just a drop straight in to see what kind of shape that makes. And then if I drop another one next to it, the two will grow into each other. And I get an interesting series of shapes which you could use to suggest uh, dandelions or some kind of foliage or coral reef. As you're doing these exercises, notice what it reminds you of because then you might be able to use it for that in a later painting. In the third square, I'm going to use my natural sponge. So before I begin laying my wash in the third square, I'm going to get my sponge wet, wring it out, and set it aside. Just as we wet our brush before we start, we want to have the sponge already damp. And now I'm going to lay again a wash in the third square. Once again, because it's very humid here, not carrying as much of a bead as I normally would so that things don't take too long to dry. It looks like this is a drying to about the right point. So I'm going to wet my sponge and then blot it off on my towel so there aren't any big drips and just touch the sponge to the paper. 
This is more subtle, takes a moment to develop, but I think it creates a nice texture effect. Notice that I'm picking up color on my sponge too, so I may wish to rinse the sponge before I apply it to another area so that I'm just placing clear water onto the page with my sponge. In the last square on the top row, we're going to again lay a wash, wait for it to dry to the right moisture content, make a bloom, and in this last square we're going to use our Holbein spray bottle that we used in the lesson on techniques for trees and we're going to again make those little droplets. Remember to make the small droplets don't press hard because then you get a mist. You want to press the plunger just about halfway or less. If you press the plunger hard you get a mist. If you press the plunger gently you get little droplets like this and that's what we want is those little droplets. So monitoring this looking for that moment when the shine is just about to leave the paper. It looks like this one has dried about to the right point so we'll try our spritz. When I'm using my spray bottle I like to do a couple of practice spritzes over on my towel or the edge of my board to make sure that I have the right amount of pressure and then I'm going to just spritz a couple of times and wait patiently. It takes a moment to develop. As you can see as we've been working these original blooms that we created developed further. So if it doesn't look like much when you first try it, don't be discouraged. Now that you've tried making blooms with several different techniques, try again in the lower squares using a different pigment. When you're done it will look something like this. A couple of potential pitfalls that I want to warn you about. Typically it does not work to use a hair dryer to dry things to the right point you'll go through the right moment too quickly and not catch it and be able to make your blooms. And secondly, sometimes people have trouble with the spray bottle because they're spraying too close. You want to spray back about six or eight inches away and instead of having your spray bottle angled down, you want to have it angled mostly upright so the droplets come out and curve down and fall on the page instead of hitting in the center and spraying out and pushing the paint away. This takes practice, so if you didn't get the results you expected the first time, that's not surprising. Just go back and give it some more tries until you get the hang of it.